Hi, my name is Elaine and in today's video I've got a story time about the weekend that I moved into my new house. So this video is going to be a bit different from the ones that I normally do. The majority of my videos are usually sit down, talky videos or the odd couple of times I do a vlog. But today I've decided to combine them both and do a sort of a story time video. So this is the first time that I'm doing something like this, so please bear with me, this is a work in progress and if you all don't like it, let me know in the comments, I won't do it again. The reason I want to try it out for this video is because the weekend that I moved into my new house, which I'm sitting in right now, I vlogged. However, it was really stressful and I forgot to vlog very important details and to be honest, the majority of it. So I thought that if I just told you the story of the weekend that I moved into my house and I peppered it with little bits of footage from the vlog, it might make quite a nice video. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the background to this is that we got the keys to our new house in April. Right now, as I'm filming this, this is August and the weekend in question that I'm talking about was the very end of June and the start of July. So between April and the start of July, we had a lot of renovation work to do in the house. In fairness that the house, in terms of structural integrity, was fine, it was nothing structural. The only thing that was very, very essential was that we had to get the bathroom sorted. For various reasons, number one, that there was a leak every time you flushed the toilet. Secondly, there was no shower. It was also badly laid out. It was grubby, it was horrible, it was gross. So that was an essential thing for us. So we hired a guy and he had a day job doing something else but would come to our house in the evening times and he did it as a kind of a nixer. While it was a cheaper way of getting our bathroom done, it also took ages and ages. And because it just kept dragging on, we decided that we were gonna just put a date on it. We were gonna say that we were moving in the weekend, end of June, start July, put the date on it and he had to be out and his, his workers had to be out by the time that date rolled around. So the moving week rolls around and we've taken a bit of time off work. So we've got five full days to move into the house, which is from a Thursday to a Monday. And there is so much work to do. I cannot begin to describe how much work we had to do. But to make it a little bit more difficult, things started going wrong. Starting with the first few minutes when we arrived to the house on Thursday morning. So today marks the start of five days of moving into our new house. And we are like four hours into the, the start of all of the moving work and we already have a problem, which is that there's a leak in our new bathroom. So this has been a great start. <laughs> there's still loads of work that we can do, um, but this is beyond frustrating because it just, it brings in this sort of panicked feeling where, um, you're like, will we actually be in the house on time? Will we have a shower? Because a bathroom is just fairly essential. Like you could do without your kitchen, but like a bathroom is fairly, fairly important. You need to have to shower, you need to be able to pee. Um, yeah. So that's where we're starting today with that problem. Um, I'm gonna give you a little updated house tour to see where we are. Also as a side note, this is one of the hottest weeks in Ireland ever. So the hottest day on record in Ireland was something, I think it was in 1887, and it was 33.3 degrees Celsius. So right now, in the center of Dublin, which is where I live, in the city center, uh, it is 25 degrees and sunny, which is fairly hot for Ireland. So that's adding a layer of like, I'm not gonna say like it's adding stress, it's just I have to keep remembering to drink water, but then we've got no working toilet, so it makes it kind of challenging. And then our garden, you can't pee in the garden because the garden has all the trees ripped up. So update on the sitting room, it's pretty similar to the way it was. There are mattresses for our day bed, um, except for we have some white kind of done here on this. But other than that, it's the same. Um, and I've just I've pulled up the, the cover that was down so the floor is nice. The kitchen is still a mess, as you can see, but our fridge freezer arrived. This is where our leak is which is quite similar to where other leak is, and that's our new plastered ceiling. So that's really, really annoying. And it happened because I uh, wanted to see what the new flush on the toilet was like, so I flushed it, you know, fairly standard thing, and that happened. Even though the bathroom is annoying us, it is one of the most beautiful rooms in the house. So these are floor tiles, they're in and grouted. That is the demon toilet, which is causing us all of the issue. Um, but then this is what the bathroom, Show you now. This is what the bathroom is like so far. So we have a lovely heated towel rail. 
We have a nice shower set up there. Nice little window to outside. These are the tiles that we had, which I wasn't a fan of when they went on the wall, but since they've been grouted, they have this lovely light gray grout. I'm in love with them. And then our sink still has to go there. So this is the stage we are at with our bathroom. And this is our bedroom. So we got a new floor put in. And we've started painting some of the white in here. We've painted the ceiling, but we just have to paint the walls. Um, but we have to wait because there's issues uh, here. This needs to be done. Now, it's not the end of the world. We can start painting the other walls. Um, but I'm really happy with the floor. It's a laminate floor and it's, except for I hate that these two floorboards are side by side. They will be covered by the bed so you won't see them, but it's just, they're not meant to be there. But the rest of it is lovely. And then this is the bit that is the most amazing aspect of the whole house, I think. And it's actually not in the house, it's in the garden. So I have recorded some footage to show you what the garden looked like. And I'm just gonna insert an image here to show you what it used to look like. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. So just keep that image in your mind's eye. See how many trees are there. See how messy it looks, how much it looks like a forest. This is what it looks like now. It's all clear, that's our garden. So we have so much land and we've kept, as you can see, that's the neighbor's tree. This one here is the neighbor's tree. So we can't do anything with that. And we actually didn't get ask our gardener to cut any of it off. We just kept it. We've got this tree back here and then we've got this lovely little tree here. And then this is like the foundations of some old building, which we don't really know about, but we're probably gonna, in the next month or so, pave out to about here and then grass all of the rest of it and then leave it for the time being and decide what we're gonna do. But that's our beautiful garden. So that was our first day. The good news was that our bathroom leak got sorted fairly quickly that day. So once our builder arrived, he had a look around and he checked a couple of things. He unfortunately had to cut a small hole in the ceiling to try and see could he get the leak from that angle. But after he cut the hole, he went back upstairs, pulled one tile back and realized that he never had to cut a hole in the ceiling in the first place. All that was wrong was that he just hadn't tightened something and every time the toilet would refill, it would sort of spill out all over the place. So that was annoying, but it was a pretty good end to day one and we were back on track for Friday. Today's already a better day. We came to the house, flushed the toilet, and water didn't start pissing down into the kitchen. Right now we have a guy downstairs um, fitting our broadband. So you can do self-install, but I just knew something would go wrong. So I got the guy to come along and then we were meant to get our sofa delivered, but there was some sort of miscommunication. So that's fine. So we're not getting that till Monday, but that's grand. And right now, this is what I'm doing. So if you see, there was like holes going into our bathroom that our builder fixed, but he just asked if we could take the wallpaper off this wall and um, so that's what I'm doing right now my trick for doing it that the builder actually told us he was like use water so he said if you had like a like a spray gun thing but we don't so I'm just using um, warm water with a little bit of soap in it and a sponge just sort of rubbing it in so that it breaks down the glue and then it will eventually start to lift up and if you do it this way, it means that the wall is clear underneath it. And then if you kind of just rip it up yourself, you get sort of stuff like this, which is all the glue stuff, which still has to come up. But just this is my project for today. all of day two Ronan's parents came along and they brought us lunch and we sat out in our conservatory and had a bit of lunch and they looked around the house admittedly we probably could have got a little bit more work done than we did but again we were waiting on our builder to patch back up that wall in order to be able to paint so that was day two day three then was basically just all about packing and cleaning so this is my beautiful sitting room Yeah, so that's what we're dealing with right now. There's like boxes everywhere. We've got some laundry that we've got done. 
but this is all boxes and stuff stacked up to go. They're all my cleaning products. Um, so this is what we're at at the moment. Everything that's over there we packed this morning. Uh, so it's majority of clothes and stuff that came out of our bedroom. One of Ronan's friends also came over to help us. So he had his car, Ronan had his car and they just went back and forth over and back to the house dropping off boxes and stacking them in our spare room uh, while I stayed at home and I cleaned. One thing though is when you see all of your possessions stacked up like that, it's kind of two thoughts that came to mind. So the first is that how on earth did we fit all of those things into a one bedroom apartment? Secondly, why do we own so many things? We had, we had even gone, we'd gone through everything and cleared stuff out, but it just felt a little bit, I don't know, sickening, I guess, that we had so many possessions. And a month later, while we're in our new house, half of that stuff is still in boxes. Another thing I did on day three was I cleaned out the microwave. So you might be like, why is this important? Well, I cleaned out the microwave using something that I'd seen on Buzzfeed. Admittedly, I've never cleaned our microwave ever. I think I'm, no, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Never cleaned our microwave. So it was gross, it was disgusting. But the thing that I saw on Buzzfeed actually worked. So how it works, is that you get a tub, you fill it with cold water, you put in some sliced lemon. I didn't have a lemon, but I had lime. You put it in to the container, put the container into the microwave, and then put the microwave on full power for, I think it was somewhere between five and 10 minutes. I think I stopped it halfway. And then what's meant to happen is the steam and the lemon and everything goes around the inside and kind of steams out the microwave and it helps to break down all the stuff that's stuck to the edge. And then in theory, you might just wipe it across, across it and it cleans and it actually did that. I did though finish it off with the spray just to get the stainless steel looking kind of shiny, but it's a new hack and what's really good is that it's a natural hack. And also the line that I used was kind of on its last legs. So it's an environmentally friendly waste saving hack. So that was day three. Day three is a pretty good day. It was tough work, but we got a lot done. Delivery in the evening and that was it. Day four fairly similar. The difference with day four is that we had a deadline. So we had to be out of our apartment by 6.30 because our landlord was coming over and we were gonna exchange keys and exchange our deposit and all that sort of stuff. So that added a little bit of stress and pressure to it. And we had sort of used up all our boxes. So we we're just going back and forth over and back to the house with kind of, I don't know, shopping bags filled with stuff. Again, some of which is just still sitting in our spare bedroom waiting to be unpacked. Another thing to add to that was that our builder was still in our house and we were going to be sleeping there that night and we didn't know whether our bathroom and all the work that he had to do was gonna be finished. So that caused my anxi anxiety to be very, very high. Also as well, it was quite an emotional day. So I've lived in eight places throughout my entire life. So there was my family home I lived in till I was four. Then there was my main family home, which I lived in for about 20 odd years. Then I lived in an apartment for a summer. I lived in another apartment for a summer. I lived in a bedsit for a month with my ex-boyfriend. I lived in an apartment for a year in Waterford. I lived in an apartment in Dublin. And then I lived in that apartment, which you see us moving out of. So I got used to moving out of places. But I think for this one, it was just that little bit more emotional because this is the first place me and Ron had ever lived. So we felt like it gave us our start as a couple. And we learned a lot about each other. We learned a lot about our habits. And we realized, I suppose it solidified the fact that we do want to live with each other and live with each other in each other's lives for the rest of our lives. Um, but there was a lot of memories there and I was quite upset leaving them. I know that in this new house, we're gonna make loads and tons of new memories and it was a happy occasion, but it was just that bittersweet point where I was leaving an apartment that I loved and also an area in Dublin that I absolutely adore. And we were sort of moving into a place that was completely unfinished. I'm still vlogging on my phone because I haven't had a chance to find my charger, but it's, actually I don't know what time it is because my watch has died. 20 past nine. 20 past nine, it's 20 past nine. Uh, we've just moved into our house um, and that was kind of daunting but before we can sleep we need to paint at least put the first coat of paint on our bedroom walls it's gonna be painted the similar gray to what's downstairs so that's our plan now we're kind of thinking that we'll just paint into the night and however long it takes just to get it done kind of low enough on paint so we might actually have to do the first coat or the top coat tomorrow or maybe in the morning or something because we're going to get a bed tomorrow at 10. So that's kind of what we're at. It's Sunday evening and it's uh, 
vaguely slightly overwhelming as we were leaving our apartment i was like this is fine this is grand no bother and as we were kind of driving down we we're driving past the shops that are near the house i just burst into tears and cried for i'd say about 10 minutes what actually stopped me crying was these these lads were cycling towards us up our side of the road and i was like what the is that and then it kind of dragged me out of it but we went for dinner then instead of coming straight back to the house and that was a good call because by the time we'd finished dinner the builder had left so we're just here on our own now it's really warm in this house it's so hot um but yeah that's what we're at for the moment so this is our makeshift bedroom actually in this light it doesn't look half as bad but when you pan up you see that the walls are unfinished and uh, what we're sleeping on is actually two different camp beds put together. And then we still have all this plastic stuff on the floor. Um, and we have no curtains or blinds. But I decided to set up the lamps just to give it a proper bedroom feel. I'm going to try and get some sleep and then get up in the morning and keep painting and go to Ikea. We're nearly there for phase one of the 12 phase renovation project. Good night. So a couple of things went wrong on day five. When I woke up in the morning, I decided that I was gonna clean down the bathroom because it was quite grubby from, you know, building work having happened until Sunday night. So as I'm wiping down the bath, I notice that there is a chip in our brand new, quite expensive bath. I don't even think I reacted to it. I think I just, kind of internalized it and sort of sucked it in and was like, well, this is terrible. So we contacted our builder and he said that he would fix it. We think it was actually, it wasn't him that did it. It was someone that he had subcontracted and it was just something fell and cut the edge of the bath, but kind of like fess up and say it. Don't just pretend that it didn't happen. I saw it. So that started the day off on a bad note. Then on Monday, we had three things that were meant to happen. So our sofa was meant to be delivered uh, we we're meant to get our bed and our mattress and then my mom's boyfriend was going to come up and help my boyfriend to put together our bed and our sofa. Sofa arrives, fine, grand, three boxes come in, I signed for them, perfect, great. My boyfriend went out to meet my mom and her boyfriend at Ikea and they got our bed frame, he had our mattress, so we brought that back. One thing that we couldn't do is the bed was meant to be obviously built in our bedroom but we weren't finished painting so I spent the entire day painting the house, sort of speed painting, trying to finish the first coat, get the second coat on and get everything sorted. This is the room that I'm in now, so it is pretty much finished, but that was quite stressful. My mom was really cool and helpful and she uh, was downstairs and she kind of cleaned up our kitchen and she put on a wash and stuff like that. But then when the lads went to sort or to uh, put the sofa together, we realized that part of the sofa was missing. There was no hinges, the legs were missing and we had the wrong cushions. So I, at this point, I think that was breaking point. I let out so many expletives. I was like, this is ridiculous. So the company also isn't open on a Monday. So I went on to every method of social media that I could find them on and I contacted them. And eventually they obviously got a voicemail from my boyfriend and they rang him back. And in fairness, the company were really good. They didn't know what the problem was. It turned out that basically the delivery company had sent us the wrong box. The guy said to us that he would have someone at our house at seven o'clock the following evening to fit the couch together, which he did. And it is one of the best purchases. For that reason, I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna stick their link down below. They're a company called Feather and Burl and their sofas are really good and really good quality. So if you are looking for something and you live in Dublin, I would recommend them. But I just didn't need that that day. It was awful, I just couldn't stop crying and I was so tired and just so physically tired from painting and I knew that I had to go back to work the following day. So the lads then moved on, they started putting together like the lats for our bed and uh, I continued painting. That was about as much work that they could do so mom and her boyfriend went home and then me and Ronan set about putting our bed together at like nine o'clock at night and we were meant to sleep in it that night. We're building our bed <coughs> and I finished painting all of the walls in the bedroom. I'll show them actually. So I still have to do the skirting boards and I have to paint the door and there's a bit of masking tape up there that I have to take off. But it's this beautiful gray color all over the walls and with our lovely laminate floor, it's quite gorgeous. It's very serene and calm in here and it gets lovely evening sun. 
So right now we're on day five of five. I go back to work tomorrow. Um, I was shell shot going back to work. <laughs> oh my god. But um, we yeah, we just make this bed and then have some dinner, and then I'm gonna have a shower, and then I'm gonna lie in my bed. It's 22.11 on Monday night. <sighs> Day five of five and the house is finally starting to feel like a home. It's gonna give you a little kind of update to show you what it's like. So this is where we're at. You can hear some sort of car alarm there, but this is sort of the room where all of our stuff is. Um, so you can see this is still all messy. But we should bit by bit, I need to clean out those presses and we should bit by bit get through a lot of this. And then we've got like storage in behind there that we can stack up stuff in as well. And our bathroom. Um, whoa. So our bathroom is so pretty and lovely and beautiful. And it's kind of lived in now. So we've got all our stuff. And some stuff in our drawer all that sort of things and even just like all the shampoos and stuff and then also you'll see that whoever installed the window before we moved in left this stupid tape on it all up the sides of it i'm gonna get some sort of sticker remover and get rid of that but the bit that's the best um is this which is our bed so this is our bedroom, which I painted today. That's uh, my makeshift blinds that I made out of black sacks. There's me in the chat. But I made this out of black sacks and I'll reuse the black sacks afterwards. So this is the best bit on our big, huge, high mattress that's very comfortable. Oh, actually, look at the sunset out our window. Okay, it doesn't really look like a sunset, it just looks like a sky. But that's the view out our bedroom window. This is the view that I've been dreaming of since we bought the house. So that's it. That is the story of what happened when I moved in to my new house. I hope you liked this style of video. I quite liked it. It was nice to be able to relive the story, tell a bit of it, and also to kind of look decent in at least some of the clips. If you liked this video, as always, please give it a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, click the subscribe button. I'll have more videos like this coming and obviously my usual how-to videos. You can follow me on my social media links. I'll be back with another video in two Sundays time. Thanks for watching.